How's it going, everyone? So while I was editing uh, my most recent Turing Complete walkthrough video, I uh, I wanted to go back and copy and paste all of the code into the comments in case anyone wants to copy it into theirs. And uh, you know the optimizer in me couldn't help but taking a look at my solutions and seeing what else I could do. And I actually came up with something um, that isn't also that isn't only uh, far superior, uh, but it's also important to know because I realized I never showed you how to manually loop. I told you about these labels and that, you know, if you have this uh, condition here next to a label, it'll jump there um, when that condition is true. Uh, one thing to know, though, is that this actually takes two addresses in RAM. You can see the... Uh, address number here on the right side we got 8 for this line and then 10 for the next line it's because this is actually split up in two and that's why when you step through it it stalls here for a tick so we just stepped here now we're still there and now we step out it's because there's two addresses here so it's important to know because it is you know, if you're trying to optimize for RAM, then that's something you need to consider. Uh, but there's a way around this, and I'll show you that here. You can see I, I put 8 into register 0. And that's because whenever you call the condition, the condition, the overwrite, where is it? Here. Our counter here is wired into register 0, so that when the condition is true, it overwrites from the value in register 0. And that's why this takes two steps, is because when you call firing, that puts the the value of this label's address, which is 13 in this case, it puts 13 into register 0, and we'll see that. So just put 13 into register 0, and now the next step is the evaluation to see if it's, see if register 3 is greater than 0. So let's go back. Now, I, I also removed um, the firing loop. I, I cover this um, idea of like walking into a loop in the maze video, uh, but I'll, I'll briefly go over it here. So essentially, if we didn't have this line where we restart, go back to the waiting, then after this line, it's gonna walk into this label, regardless of you know not having a jump condition. It, it'll just walk into this label and it'll execute the fire out. We can, I can show that to you. All right, so we just waited, and now we fired. And so using that, you can reduce the amount of uh, checks that you make. So what I did was, there, there's two steps. First, I moved, I moved the wait to the beginning of the wait address, or the wait label. So I moved this line up into here and the reason I don't have it like that here is because I wanted to start the wait I wanted to take the input and then if the input was a rat I wanted to jump here and then fire and then it just goes back and then it takes the next input so it'll do like one rat you know at a time um, but if I put the weight in front in front of this firing condition, we'll see the behavior. Yeah, so it's completely different. I, actually, I'll, I'll uncomment this because that's uh, another break. So it's normal for now, but there's a key difference. So now we see a rat. There, we got the input for seeing the rat, but now we just waited. Because this is before our firing check, so we we missed that rat, and now we're gonna we're gonna lose. See, they got too close. So that's why I had it after the check initially. I'll put it back there. But in this case, I do it first. Uh, and then I check the input, and if I see nothing, so if there's no rat in front of me, I I go back, I go back to here. 
but then if I do see something, then this fails and it just keeps moving forward. And then I have it hard coded to shoot four times. Now this isn't gonna work if you know they if they post a update and now it's six rats each line. This isn't gonna work because it only fires four times. Uh, but as you can see, let's do a performance comparison. Here's our original program. Alright, so not bad, but now check this out. You can see that's in a league of its own, essentially. And that's the power of manually looping. Because now, instead of doing these two operations every time just to check for something, we only do one. And we can do that because we just put the the address of our of our loop into register zero ourselves. We'll, we'll see that here. There, eight is now in register zero. And since we only have essentially one loop, we we can just leave the eight in register zero. We don't have to keep putting different values in. You know, in this one, you have to have the seven for the waiting loop and then the 13 for the firing loop. And so you're sw switching values in and out all the time. Uh, and it's just inefficient. If we can make it to just have a single loop, then, well, you saw the result. And uh, yeah, I just thought that was important because I realized I didn't show you how to manually create a loop and just instead using labels. And this is uh, an extremely powerful tool when you can use it. So yeah, that was uh, just something I wanted to share.